hey guys welcome to my youtube channel so in this video we'll be talking about liquidity or secrets to liquidity or elements of draw liquidity some of which you might have already known some of which will be new to you so if you must know liquidity is the main aspect of trading like everything on the chart is all about liquidity you see market runs to an area of liquidity and starts rejecting from that point now if you are able to spot these areas of liquidity then you will stop being the liquidity with that being said let's dive in now according to the order of importance the first on the list is highs and lows yeah you might already be familiar with that every high and every low in the market are liquidities yes to you you think it needs to be equal highs it needs to be triple highs or multiple highs but i'm yet to tell you that don't look at it that way look at it like every single highs and lows in the market are liquidities first off if you see this particular price action on the screen you can see this is a high and this is a low you can also see this is a short term low and that is a high and also this is a short term low and this is an external low that is also high so what happens you can see that all of these areas are being targeted what price mainly does is it runs to this area of liquidity take the stops that are there and start going opposite so if you are good at spotting out these levels then you'll be better off making lots of money now what happens here is that if you can see this is called the buy side liquidity once price takes that out price starts going opposite to the next liquidity obviously now you can see this is called a sell side liquidity once price takes that out you can see here it starts going opposite now we also have another buy side liquidity which price is yet to take but obviously you can see where price is heading to that it's heading for that buy side liquidity we also have another external liquidity here and you can see how price came for that and start going opposite so if you're good at spotting these liquidities then you're good at technical analysis you just need to spot where the liquidity is at i know you'll be asking why is price not coming for the external low instead it's coming for the short term low well it's obvious this external low is the beginning of the structure so price needs to take an inducement before going opposite and that is how you can spot liquidities which is the first element of a draw on liquidity. the next one is rejection blocks now what are rejection blocks you might want to ask that question it's very important right rejection blocks are areas of rejection like on the chart when you see a level you spot a level like this that's rejecting with long shooted out weeks that becomes a rejection block price is rejecting from that level shooting out the week and ending up closing lower so what do you do in this case is you outline your rejection block and what price simply does with this rejection block is that once price treats back to a rejection block it sees that as an area of liquidity like i said liquidity are where price are attracted to so once price gets to an area of liquidity it simply goes to the opposite so rejection block is an element of liquidity now once price gets to that rejection block you can still find an entry there to sell off and this is simply what price does price gets to that rejection block and sell off simple stuff right now the third element of draw liquidity according to the order of importance is another block and i believe you must have already heard of other blocks from one or two channels but what is another block another block is simply the last bearish candle before an impulsive move to the upside or the last bullish candle before an impulsive move to the downside now it's very important to know that another block must be sweeping a low must be taking out a low and also an other block must have fair value gaps and you shouldn't worry about that because we're going to be talking about fair value gap soon enough now how do you mark out your other block first you want to pick from the beginning of the candle when i mean the candle i mean the whole candle including the weeks if not you might likely miss some entries right so you pick the beginning of the whole candles and expect price to treat back into that other block before going higher now what do you do let's watch how price respects this other block you can see how price treats into that other block respecting that area of liquidity like i said liquidities are always a point of rejection right so once price treats into that other block it starts going to the opposite direction and that is how to spot a good liquidity right so this high could be your target for a good buy 
So number four is the Beverly gap, which can also be called an inefficiency or an imbalance. Yes, I mentioned it before, but what's a Beverly gap? Well, Beverly gaps consist of three different candles, right? First candle, the second candle, and the third candle. The second candle is what determines the gap while the third candle is what determines if it's going to be a Feverly gap. So the, third, the second candle carries the displacement or the momentum that gives the gap, while the third candle determines if it's going to be a gap or if it's going to close back to the high of the first candle. Now, what you, what, what you really want to do to find the Feverly gap is to find the highest price of the first candle and the lowest price of the second candle. So something like this, you can extend it to the right. Once you see something like this, this tells you that this is a Feverly gap. Now, price leaves this gap in between as an imbalance or an inefficiency for markets or price to feel later. So this can be an area of liquidity because area of liquidity is simply where price is attracted to and rejected from. So once price gets to that Feverly gap, it's safe to say that it might likely reject from there. Now let's see. So we have a lot of all this price action going back and forth, and we're just patiently waiting for price to drop into that Feverly gap before we could do anything else. And you can see how price drops into that Feverly gap before started buying, and that tells us that that is a valid Feverly gap. Now the fifth we have is liquidity void. Now understand that liquidity void is one of the most rarest form of drawn liquidity out there because this particular form of liquidity happens very rare, like once in a while, but once you see it, you can't unsee it, right? So what happens, what's a liquidity void? Similar to that of the Feverly gap, liquidity void is simply where there's no, there's no candle at all. So it, can, it could be just total void or it could be just weeks. Now, how do we find this void? Now you can see, on this level, there's no candle filling those gaps there. So we have a liquidity void. If you draw that to the, to the right hand side, you can expect market to respect, you can expect price, draw that to the right hand side, you can expect price to respect that void. So you can see how I mark my liquidity void because there is no candle filling up that space and the market is meant to be efficient. What I mean by efficient is that they are, all of these voids and gaps are not meant to be left in the market. But when they are left in the market, price does what price goes back to refill them. So if you just play the chart there, you see how price respects that liquidity void and starts going opposite. So just like other form of liquidities, liquidity void is an element of drawn liquidity. And you can see how the candles of this, of this, uh, the, the body of the candles are respecting this particular void. The next element of drawn liquidity we have is the breaker block. Now, what do I mean by breaker blocks? Breaker blocks are a form of liquidity that also happens on the charts seasonally. Like it doesn't happen every time, but once you see it, it's always there. For example, you want to have price taking out a high, which is also a form of liquidity. So we have price taking out a high. It could be slightly, it could be with momentum, but whichever way, price related a high. So what you want to find next is price breaking a low. So this area, this last bearish candle before the reading of that high is no more another block that becomes what? A breaker block. So you outline that to the right. Once price breaks that block, it becomes what? A breaker block. And what do you expect? You expect price to treat into that block before selling off. Something like this. You expect price to treat into that block before selling off. Now, if you play, you see exactly what price does in that area. And price did exactly what we wanted. You can see how price played into the breaker block before selling off. Now, this is a very useful form of liquidity. So now you know all the elements of drawn liquidity that are out there. There are no more secrets to be kept. From the order of importance, you have the old high or old low. You have the rejection block. You have the order block. You have the fair value gap. You have the liquidity void. And you have the breaker block. I really hope you find this video insightful and if you do please like the video and hit the subscribe button if you want me to explain further in details about this element of liquidities until next time